well, um, I think it's over, it's over to you. Um, are, are there any questions? Um, I think we've got a few coming in, um, and do feel free to phone in if you would like to. Okay, now, yeah. oh, Karen. Yes, yes, Nikki. I've actually had um, a question via live meeting coming in respect of visits to uh, firms. Um, we've had a question in respect of uh, a sole practitioner who's asking whether the visits under OFR will be like those uh, carried out by the practice standards unit that they had a recent visit from an advisor. Um, I think whilst the uh, basic format of the visit may, may be similar, we really would be looking to try and narrow down our focus again based on risk. So rather than trying to cover quite a wide range of information uh, in a firm within sort of one or two days of a visit, we would be trying to tailor that really um, to what we think uh, the areas of risk are, I, either because we're responding to an event Nikki, which has occurred, yeah. or either because it's part of our looking at themed risk. So really it's about sort of tailoring that particular visit um, and using our time and resource wisely because, you know, as we appreciate firms are very busy, and it's about making sure that we don't impact upon their, their time. Yes, yeah, so and it's about sort of all working together, really, ultimately, for, for, for the users of legal absolutely, services. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, now, what else have we got coming in? I think there's some... Uh, yeah. So, I think we have, we have a question, Nikki, which is actually uh, a question which has, has come up at quite a few of the other forums that we've been running as well in respect of how do we decide what is a a low risk firm. Um, again, I've talked about the November policy statement, uh, and it might be useful to refer you to that. And especially uh, paragraph 39 of the November policy statement, if you want to have a look at it after the, the uh, webinar, um, that explains about our approach at the, at the current time to assessing risk. So we'll look at both uh, the impact um, and the probability in terms of risk. And of course, um, Looking at that now, we're working on the information which we already hold. Um, so our approach to risk is currently be, being developed, and uh, we will be looking to uh, have the assessment of risk and then drive the activities. So we will, we will be deciding what a low risk firm is based on the information that we currently hold, um, and we will be looking at both impact and probability in that assessment of risk. Yes, Carol, that you can. That's, I think that's, that's quite right. And we've had um, another question in asking, will greater flexibility lead to greater risk? Um, well, I think we see flexibility. It may lead to different kinds of risk, but flexibility, I think, is something which is absolutely fundamentally required for the changing legal marketplace we have. ABSs, which are about to be, with, well, we expect to be with us um, October this year, and, um, and the consumers are looking for new ways of, the, of delivery of legal services. Um, and um, so flex, flexibility may, may create different risks, um, but we, we, we think that these are manageable. Um, we're asked, will training be provided? Well, again, we would encourage you, please, to keep an eye on our website. Um, we are aiming to provide um, a variety of resources to assist and support um, the regulated community. Um, at present, we have, we have various documents, we have uh, videos, we have previous webinars. Um, and frequently asked questions and the like. And um, we know that, other, that, that there will be other training organizations providing similar, similar um, um, training. Um, and also, I think the Law Society is playing its part mm. in that. Yes, um, so, um, Karen, I think you've got a question there. Yes, uh, we've got a question uh, asking whether we consider that sole practitioners are more risky. Um, going back to uh, my previous comment in respect of we would be looking at the impact in respect of assessing risk. Now, as I said, that in our, our starting point for risk is looking at 
the impact of the FON in the FRA meeting its regulatory objectives. Um, so it is likely, and the kind of models that we are looking at now, that that wouldn't say sole practitioners in a high-risk group uh, because of the size of the firm. Um, and we've also got another question in the sense of, are sole practitioners areas of work, for example, conveyancing work, more risky? This is part of the work that the Risk Centre team are looking at in respect of different areas of work. Uh, we know that there have been in the past some, some difficulties in the conveyancing arena and some risks do, do stem from that. But it is part of ongoing work that the Risk team are doing in looking at different areas of practice and also different areas of practice within different shapes and sizes of firms. Absolutely, Karen. I think, that's, I think that's quite right. We've got another question here as to what additional disclosure requirements are needed. I think this goes back as really, again, to um, how we assess risk. Um, and I, I, I think really that, that exactly what, what extra information will be required, this is still under development, um, but um, we will be um, looking at all, uh, we'll be looking at all areas of um, activity um, and the, um, the, the, the connections that um, owners may have um, and the particular client base they serve, um, this, 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 anything which might, which, which might be seen as a risk factor, we will want information mm. about. Uh -huh. Yes, Nikki, we've actually had another uh, question on that topic, and the question is, will information required by the SRA be easy to provide? Um, I think, firstly, what I should say about uh, the, the information which we will uh, require from you, we are still, still looking at what the content of that should be. But the guiding principle that we have is that we will always be transparent about the reasons as to why we require information from you, and we will also only ask information which we will then go on to use. Um, in respect of uh, the improvements that we will be getting in IT at the SRA, an important point to make as well is that we will be expecting to gather this information online. And we are very keen also, as indeed are all of our firms, to make the process as easy as possible and to also give you as much notice as possible to make sure that that information is readily available. I think probably it's, um, we, we, we should add that we aim to be a proportionate regulator. Absolutely. Yes. Um, we, we, we know that serving clients is, a, um, is, is, a time, is, is, is an important but also time-consuming um, activity, and we, we, we are not in the business of asking you to do things for no good reason. Um, um, we've got another question here. Um, when will the consultation results be out? Um, well, we ex the, the consultation closes on the 8th of um, March, and I expect that we would um, get a, a, a report published probably with, it's, it's hard to say exactly, but probably with, it was, it's certainly within a few weeks of that. The next steps after that is, um, I, I think as I explained, um, the LSB will look at the responses and then essentially they will take over the reins and will decide whether or not to um, recommend to the, um, to, 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 to the Lord Chancellor the making of a Section 69 order. Right, we have another, um, another question here. Um, that, well, I think it's really, it's really a comment um, that this, this is a very new way of working. Um, I, I assume that's the outcome of focus regulation. Um, how prepared is the SRA for this? Um, well, I think it's fair to say that there's been a huge amount of change and preparation going on at the SRA, and that will continue um, on, on an ongoing basis. Um, we are confident that we are well prepared um, to, um, to, 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 to regulate in an outcome-focused and risk-based way, and, um, and, and, and we are keen to engage with our regulated community. We see huge value in that, both for us, 
and for the regulated community, and indeed for, for, for science. And I think, Nikki, it might also be worth um, pointing uh, the audience back to November 3, the November policy statement as well, in respect of there was some information in there in respect of getting our staff ready for the change too, in respect of uh, the processes uh, that we are undertaking, both in respect of the structuring of our organisation, but also in the assessments that we're putting our staff through Absolutely. to make sure that actually our staff are ready for this change as well. Absolutely. Now, I understand we have um, some, some callers on the line, is that right? Thank you. If you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad and wait for your name to be announced. If you wish to cancel your request, please press the hash key. 